How's it going, you guys? So I just woke up drinking my morning coffee, getting ready to start my day. And I want to make a quick video talking about uh, one of the most effective methods for overcoming anxiety in any situation and all kinds of anxiety. So those of you who have been following me for quite some time probably know that I actually suffer from anxiety uh, from around 2011 to um, like late 2014. And in particular, I suffered from panic disorder and uh, frequent panic attacks from March 2012 to around August 2014. And I actually overcame them 100%. And I'd love to say that it had something to do with my nutrition or herbs and supplements and things, but actually the way that I overcame my panic attacks and was able to effectively remove all forms of anxiety and stress from my life was a simple shift in how I approached stress and anxiety in general. And so basically these panic attacks that came into my life, they taught me a very valuable lesson about all forms of stress and how to overcome it. Um, which has made me, which was made it possible for me to transform my life completely in many aspects since then, simply due to this shift in approach. So, what did I do to overcome panic attacks? So, basically, I would feel the panic attack coming on. Okay, so, so originally, when I was suffering from panic disorder, what would happen is I would feel the panic attack coming along. I would start to feel myself hyperventilating. I'd be in the middle of the panic. And the whole time, I'm resisting the panic. I'm like, oh no, no, I can't, no, stop, no. And I was trying everything I could to avoid the panic attack and to stop it, right? I tried breathing techniques to try to, um, you know, resist the panic breathing. I tried thinking techniques to try to avoid, to try to resist the, uh, the thought patterns associated with anxiety. I tried herbs to try to combat the anxiety. I tried all different methods to try to fight the anxiety and fight the panic attack. But do you know what eventually actually worked? Well, so, um, what was it? So, I forgot the whole story um, that I normally tell, but essentially, I stopped fighting the panic. Instead of trying a method to try to fight the panic or to try to um, resist the panic or to try to remedy the, pan the panic, I just let the panic happen and I embraced the panic and I welcomed the panic. So originally what I, what I did was I would talk to the panic. I'd be like, aha, uh -huh, that's funny. Uh, you know, panic attack, you know, you think you're going to fuck with me? Well, we'll see about that, you know. And uh, that joking kind of helped, I noticed. Joking with the panic kind of helped, but it didn't prevent it fully, but I started to notice when I started to view the panic as a joke, uh, it it started to ease off some of the rough side, the roughness of it. Um, but when I started to welcome the panic, when I started to be like, all right, I'm having a panic attack, here it goes, and I didn't resist it, um, it just went away. And it was disappointing because I had all these different things that I wanted to try on the panic attack in the future. I had a whole bunch of supplements and teas and uh, methods I've heard from other like YouTube channels and things talking about how they overcame panic. And when I just started to welcome the panic, all of a sudden I could no longer experience panic attacks. So I could no longer experiment with different remedies. So I was very disappointed that the panic attack went away. But um, literally just wanting the panic attack to come completely removed it. Like I started to, cause that, that was exactly the thing is uh, when I started experimenting with remedies, after a while, I was excited for the panic attack. Like, because I had all of these methods I wanted to use to remove panic from my life, 
I was excited. I was like, oh, here comes another pack attack. Awesome. It's an opportunity for me to drink chamomile tea and see if it has any effects on it. And the panic attack just didn't happen. I was like, wait a second, what the hell? I felt it coming along. How come, how come it's not, how come it didn't happen? And it's because, well, for one, anxiety is simply a negative manifestation of excitation. And excitation is a positive manifestation of anxiety. They're both the same thing, just manifested differently. So what is anxiety? Anxiety is an attachment to the future. It's a negative attachment to the future where you're, you're, you see, you know, you're scared of something happening. It could be a panic attack. It could be you're late for work. It could be a social situation where you think you're going to get judged or something, which is social anxiety. Uh, and you have these expectations and you're anticipating those expectations. Like, oh, I'm going to get fired from my job if I'm late. Oh, these people are going to judge me and they're going to think I'm weird and blah, blah, blah. Um, which I don't have that, by the way. But, you know, whatever it is, it's a, you're anticipating a negative result from happening. A negative outcome. You're attached to the outcome of something negative happening. Well, what is being excited? Being excited is, oh my God, I can't wait for that concert. It's going to be so great. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so looking forward to this new job or whatever I'm going to get because, you know, it's so awesome. It has all these benefits, yada, yada. I'm, I'm excited to see my girlfriend or whatever because we're going to do some awesome things together. <laughs> whatever it, it is, the point is being excited is anticipating positive, fun things in the future. Okay, it's a positive manifestation of anxiety. It's is anticipating good things happening, uh, good outcomes. You're attached to good outcomes happening. Um, and anxiety is attached to negative outcomes happening. And so there, there's two, so, so basically for me, I accidentally shifted my anxiety into ex excitedness where I was like, originally I was like, oh God, here comes a panic attack. It's going to kill me. Um, I'm going to be done. You know, like, oh my God, I don't want to. It's so scary. And then eventually I shifted it over to, uh, I'm so excited for this panic attack to happen because I can try this holy basil tea that I have to see if it works on my anxiety. I can try this breathing technique to see if it helps and I can make a video about it. So I went from resisting the panic because of some, a negative uh, anticipation, negative expectation, to um, being excited for the panic attack because of a positive exp I'm like, oh my god, I get to try this new thing. And so anxiety cannot, and so the panic attack just went away because anxiety and panic cannot exist when you no longer see the outcome as a threat. So the outcome was panic attack, this thing I'm anxious about, right? It was a threat. I'm like, oh, you know, like that, oh, it's so scary. It's so, there's dangerous, it's negative. But now I viewed it as, oh my God, it's an opportunity for growth. And the stress went away, anxiety went away. Panic attack just no longer existed. And of course, when you're excited about something and then it just doesn't happen, you become disappointed and let down you're like oh it didn't happen and that's actually one of the um negatives of positive excitation is that you said you can set yourself up for disappointment but anyway so literally just by uh view by approaching it in a positive way and by feeling positive about it like i'm excited for this to happen it went away so there's a couple ways you can approach, and this this can be put into all aspects of life. Um, you know, I think it's part. It's kind of what some of this positive thinking and optimistic type of psychology deals with is viewing things positively rather than negatively, or changing your self talk using affirmations. But fundamentally I think what you have to change is how you feel not how you think but how you feel and thinking and visualizing can actually influence how you feel because a lot of anxiety is visualizing the negative thing happening over and over again which creates the feeling and triggers the panic but so you can you can change your thoughts about something you can change your 
visualization about something, but ultimately you have to get yourself into a feeling state. And for me, I was genuinely excited about the panic attack. <laughs> um, and it just, it just killed it. Um, but all things that are stressful in life, the stress response is, happens entirely inside your body. And so while you may not be able to change a negative situation um, on the outside, you can change the way you feel about it. And when you change the way you feel about it, that can definitely change how it actually plays out in reality. Um, and oftentimes you can actually create a more positive result by changing how you feel and think um, compared to if you would have just gone on with the negativity the way you would have anyway. Anyway, um, so is in regards to you know all stressful situations, you can either become neutral to something by detaching yourself from the outcome completely, like, oh, if I have a panic attack, it's okay. It'll go, it'll pass. Or, you know, a panic attack's not gonna kill me. Let's just get it over with, you know? If you can become neutral about something, you don't have to be excited or happy about something, but just detach your, your, yourself from the emotions. Like, don't respond to it emotionally. The panic and anxiety and the stress goes away. Um, you know, detaching yourself from the outcome, becoming neutral, neutral to the, to the outcome, becoming neutral is one way. And it creates kind of like a more calmness. And at first it will be difficult, but over time, the more you, the more you try to shift yourself to a more productive response, the more your body will. But if you never try, if you never try to shift things, It'll never happen, especially if you keep telling yourself, oh, no, I have all I have bills to pay. I have to be anxious about my losing my job or, you know, like, oh, no, I go like if you keep telling yourself things like that. You can't be t you cannot look at this uh, in a logical, rational kind of like serious type of way. You have to approach it softly and have faith in the fact that changing your stress response will create all the positive things that you are actually anxious about creating in the first place so that you can effectively remove the panic from your life because the whole reason why people are anxious is because they don't want negative things to happen and obviously they want positive things to happen but if you just by moving to a more neutral and optimistic feeling place you actually indirectly create more positive things in your life over time, but you'll never realize that till you get to that place of neutrality. And so, for example, social situations, um, people tend to attach themselves to their views of people, regardless of how they act, right? But people first have an impression of you and it changes how they act towards you. And so, for example, social anxiety, if you're always judged by a certain group and treated wrong, um, part of that has to do with the way that you're acting and the other part of it has to do with they're probably negative people. But if you can detach yourself from the outcome and detach yourself from how they feel, from how they look at you, and you just become neutral. And you, you talk to them civilly, but you don't react the same way you normally would to their judgments and things. Over time, those people will actually start to treat you differently just because you're not reacting to their negativity. But the key here is not to, you know, overcompensate. A lot of people will be like, oh, yeah, I don't give a fuck what they think, you know? And then when they talk to them, they project this attitude. <laughs> like, you literally need to actually change your attitude from within. Like, literally have zero response to it. There's a difference between people who, I don't care what they think, you know, fuck what they think, you know, they're meaningless, you know, there's a difference between that and literally not caring, where you're just like, ah, eh, yeah, that's the way they think, it's kind of whatever, <laughs> and then you walk in this situation and you just let everything bounce off, you have no, like, no attachment, there's a huge difference, and so really understanding what it means to become neutral to something is very important and a lot of people get it wrong and they wonder why it doesn't work it's because you're so you're so you're so attached to to these techniques working you know uh that they actually don't work because you're so attached but 
Um, so there's the detachment and becoming neutral, but then there's the shifting your approach towards excite excitement. So it's hard to become neutral sometimes because it requires putting out the flame of anxiety and stress. Uh, and so instead, you can literally just channel that anxiety into excite excitation. Now be careful because this could be viewed as you know, madness and, and mental illness from other people, but you can also channel the anxiety towards controlled excitation. Like, oh yeah, I'm so excited for this thing to happen. You gotta find a way to be excited about something or find a way to become neutral about something. So some people, they develop faith in God where they're like, oh, if, uh, you know, God will take care of me in this negative time or um, you know, faith in the universe, like the universe brought me here for a reason, or whatever it is, or uh, whatever happens, happens for a reason, or, you know, if I can just become neutral, I can create more positive things, which is actually a psychological fact. Uh, but many people have different methods of creating these productive states of approaching things. It doesn't really matter what technique or what, what, uh, how you frame it. What matters is you become neutral or you become, you, cr you channel that anxiety into positivity. So you can explore all these different methods, the law of attraction, God, or just understanding how the stress response works. But eventually this state of becoming neutral, detaching from outcome, or um, channeling that stress into the positive manifestation of it, it can be plugged into all aspects, all aspects. But the most important thing is, is, de is removing the flame of anxiety. And that's exactly what I did accidentally by becoming excited to something. Uh, but stress and anxiety cannot exist is, uh, when you no longer view the thing as a threat. And stress is entirely based on threat, a threat. And so if nothing seems like a threat to you, you know, you got to identify what the threat is. Because if you think for one second, oh, no, that's not true. Sometimes I'm anxious, but I'm, it's not about the future. Or I'm anxious, but I don't see there is no threat. You know, what do, what do I do if there's absolutely no threat and I'm still stressed or anxious? Well you haven't identified the threat if you think there's no threat because if there's no threat your body will not produce the stress response that is entirely wired around neutralizing threats so discover the threat become neutral to the threat or view the threat as a positive and it will no longer exist what happens when somebody with a knife walks through your door you you view them as a threat and the stress response happens well, what happens when your best friend walks through, through the door with some with your favorite food or whatever? Uh, you are overwhelmed with joy and appreciation. So find appreciation for the threat, and the threat will not exist because a threat cannot be appreciated. Um, anyway, leave your question comments down below, and I'm gonna go to the gym. Talk till next time.